far we have discussed the Himalayan and the Peninsular rivers. Now, there are some notable differences between these two kinds of rivers. As we know, the Himalayan rivers originate from the Himalayan mountains. On the other hand, the Peninsular rivers originate from the Peninsular plateau and the central highlands. The Himalayan rivers are perennial in nature. This means that these rivers have water throughout the year. Now, you may ask, how do these rivers have water throughout the year? Don't they get dry during the summers? Well, these rivers receive water from two sources, the glaciers and the seasonal rainfall. So, in a year, even if there is less rainfall, they don't dry up as they get water from the glaciers. On the other hand, the peninsular rivers are seasonal rivers, meaning they are dependent on the monsoonal rainfall. During the dry summer season, the flow of water in these rivers is very low. Himalayan rivers are longer in length and have larger drainage basins as compared to their peninsular counterparts. For example, Himalayan rivers like the Ganga, Indus, and Brahmaputra run up to lengths of 2,500 kilometers. while the longest peninsular river, that is the Kutavari, runs only 1500 kilometers. When coming down to the lower course of its journey, the Himalayan rivers make large deltas. Comparatively, the peninsular rivers make smaller deltas. Some examples of the Himalayan rivers are the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. Some examples of peninsular rivers are the Narmada, the Tapi, the Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna and the Kaveri. The Himalayan and the peninsular rivers vary on the basis of several aspects and yet both these kinds of rivers act as lifelines for India. flowing rivers flow towards the east while the west flowing rivers flow towards the west. But apart from the direction of their flow, these rivers are different from each other in many ways. The east flowing rivers drain in the Bay of Bengal whereas the west flowing rivers drain in the Arabian Sea. The east flowing rivers have longer courses while the majority of the west flowing rivers have shorter courses. Another noticeable difference that we can find is that before draining, the east flowing rivers create deltas, while the west flowing rivers do not form deltas. Generally, they form estuaries. Let's pause here for a while. Why is there a difference of this sort? Why do west flowing rivers not make deltas? Well, it is because most of the west flowing rivers originate from the western parts and run a very short course before draining. The short course and high speed of the rivers do not allow it to carry enough sediments to form a delta. On the other hand, the east flowing rivers have gentle slopes and long courses allowing them to collect sediments and create a delta. Well, some examples of the east flowing rivers are the Mahanadi, the Gadavari, the Krishna and the Kaveri. And some examples of the west flowing rivers are the Narmada, the Tapi, the Sabarmati, the Mahi, the Bharatapura and the Periyar.